Hi everyone, my name is Wendy Stewart. I'm a paediatric neurologist in New Brunswick in Canada. So I take care of children from age 0 to 18 who have problems with their brain, spine, nerves or muscles. I'm also a musician and I'm very interested in how music and all the arts can be used to really foster well-being. So I'm probably a little bit biased, but I think the brain's pretty amazing. But one of the things to recognise about the teen brain is that it's still growing and developing. And one of the last parts of the brain to mature is called the frontal lobe. Now this is the part of our brain where we plan, prioritise and also control our impulses. This means that in the teen years, we tend to be more impulsive and get involved in risky behaviours without considering the consequences of what might happen. It's also a time when our brain is influenced by what our peers think and will often take chances to impress others. And when we do this, we activate the reward systems in our brain and it makes us feel pretty good. So that can make teens more vulnerable to mental health problems. It's also a time in our life when mental health disorders such as anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder can all present. Most of the teens that I meet don't get nearly enough sleep. You really need about nine to 10 hours. And if we're sleep deprived, this makes it difficult for us to pay attention. And if we already struggle with anxiety or our mood, then it makes things worse. The good news is that even with all these challenges, most teens do go on to become healthy adults. So when we practice something and put effort into figuring it out, we're creating new connections between our brain cells, or what we call neurons. It can be tempting sometimes to give up on something if you can't quite get it, but getting close to understanding or close to being able to play a tune, for example, and then correcting any errors is actually a great way to strengthen the brain's connections. So in other words, mistakes are not always bad. The more we practice something, we strengthen the neural connections, which makes it easier the next time to complete it. The more ways we can learn to adapt to challenges and feel comfortable with things that don't always go to plan, then this helps us deal with other challenges in our life in a positive way. Music is a somewhat unique skill because it can engage many different parts of the brain. And this is particularly true if you play an instrument. There's been some really cool work done with functional imaging techniques that show what happens when we play an instrument. So as I've already said, my primary instrument is an accordion and I see this as the quintessential whole brain, brain instrument. So when I'm playing with my right hand, I'm involving the left side of my brain, especially the motor part. And then with my left hand playing, the right side of my brain's engaged. When I'm reading the music, that engages the back part of my brain called the occipital lobe. Now I'm listening to what's happening, so that engages both temporal lobes. And then I'm also judging what it sounds like, how loud I should play it, what emotion I want to put into it. And that engages all different parts of the brain. The other thing is that you also have to be coordinated, so that also includes the cerebellum, which is the back part of the brain. Now it's not just playing an instrument, but if you're listening to music, that can be powerful as well. When we create memories, they become more powerful and easier to remember the more more cues that we have associated with them. Composers know this, and whether we realise it or not, the music scores of movies and TV shows become a part of our memories of particular scenes. Music can also impact our mood. It can make us feel a whole range of emotion. Different rhythms can also impact us, so we can use music as a motivator for exercise, for example. So music's a powerful tool for activating many different parts of the brain. It can motivate us and build brain connections and positively change our mood. So our brain cells have these little protrusions called dendrites and then there's one long one that comes from each brain cell called an axon. When we're born, our brain cells create all sorts of protrusions to connect with as many different neurons as possible so that we're ready to learn anything that comes along. And so then what the brain has to do is actually organize that so that we could learn to speak a particular language, develop our own personality. The brain does this by pruning the connections that we do not regularly use. And so it gets organized into all the different pathways. So while we're young and still growing and even on into adulthood, it's actually possible to modify our brain pathways. This is what we refer to as brain plasticity. So we can create new brain cell connections and perhaps change how we think about something, how we understand something. The other side of this is that we can also develop unhelpful patterns of behavior or thinking and created brain pathways that cause us to react a certain way. The good news is that these can be changed and with some work on our part, we can change the way we think and respond if we feel it's negative or impacting us.
Some of the more common symptoms that I might see in my practice, in teens particularly, are anxiety, obsessive thoughts and depressed mood. You want to watch out for and recognise when these symptoms start impacting your life because that's when you're going to need some help. Things can include not being able to sleep. Most people can fall asleep in about 10 minutes. So if it's taken you an hour or more to settle to sleep, then you might want to talk to somebody and see if you can get some help. Similarly, if you're unable to go out and have fun with your friends or feel like you're avoiding certain situations on a regular basis because you're too worried about what people might think of you, what you should wear, what might happen, then this is a flag that you might need some support and help with it. The good thing is that if you note these symptoms and pick up on them early, then you can hopefully get help and they may not develop into a diagnosis of a mental health disorder. Learning to play an instrument and songwriting, for example, are great ways for youth to express their emotions when a young person feels proud of what they've achieved. This can help your mental health generally and also your self-esteem. Playing music and songwriting require perseverance and getting encouragement to stay with this, even if you feel it's not perfect, is a great way to foster the ability to keep trying in the face of challenges. I really feel if young people have more of an understanding about how music can impact the brain, they could learn to use it more effectively. So for example, they could identify what type of music is motivating for them and gets them going, what kind lifts their mood, what makes them feel good, and also what allows them to experience emotions such as sadness and loss. In this way, music could be used to lift their spirits, work through these tough emotions. Sometimes we don't have words that we can say to one another, but music allows us to share the experience without words. Keeping what we feel inside can make us feel stressed and anxious and that keeps us in what we call fight or flight mode. So this means adrenaline is high, leading to a high heart rate and a high blood pressure. If we're like this all the time, it can affect our overall health and mood. So things like learning an instrument and songwriting provide an outlet to process emotions and allow us to focus on something else and let go of what's troubling us. But remember, when we're playing a piece of music, we're learning to listen, to pay attention, to collaborate, maybe to harmonize. We're also learning that mistakes are okay and we can learn from them. These are skills that have relevance and can be applied to all aspects of our lives. So it can really develop your skills in life, not just as a musician. When I think of mindfulness, I think of it as a way of focusing on something and letting go of the negative or busy thoughts that keep intruding in our thinking. If we truly engage in music, it's possible to do this at a depth that there's just nothing else. The music becomes your focus. When I was training to be a doctor, I would be on call from 8 in the morning until 6 p.m. the next day, often without any sleep. So by the time it was over, I was pretty tired and sometimes felt quite ill. If I had band practice that night, I would force myself to go and afterwards, every time I would feel so much better. I would say that music's my passion. I get a lot of joy and reward about playing music for other people. So music can be a very powerful way of helping someone find themselves again. If you listen really closely to music, you can actually teach yourself to focus in and listen to the different components. Examples include listening to the lyrics and really reflecting on what the artist is trying to say. What does it mean to you? You can listen to the different instruments and try to isolate them and see how the artist used it to get the sound they wanted. You could then think about the harmonies that are being used. How does that change the mood? And what you're doing then, if you really focus in on all these things, is to actually fill your working memory with different thoughts and hopefully more positive ones. You're not allowing those negative thoughts to fill your working memory and your mind and to take over what you're trying to think about. Now no matter what you're doing in terms of being engaged in music, remember that music itself is not a substitute for help that you might need from a professional. And so never be afraid or frightened to reach out and get the help that you need. I would encourage any teen getting involved in music in some way if they've not done so before. If they feel listening to music is their preference, I would encourage them to think about how they might do that in a more deliberate way that's helping them in their life. Learning an instrument can help with problem solving and other academic skills. It helps us stay with something and work at it, get, trying to get it right, even if it's hard at the beginning. And I think that's a really important skill to have. The first piece I'm going to play is a beautiful slow air, and then I'm going to play you a jig. 